Lei. Excellent. Thank you for joining. Despite the uh, despite uh, Easter holidays. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look <clears throat> what we uh, what we are up to. So I've published the assignment last week. I hope uh, you've seen it, and uh, you've just over two weeks to do it. Well, you we have less than two weeks left. But overall, it's, uh, yeah. I'll show you some tricks, and uh, some questions will be very similar to the ones that are in the assignment. Uh, okay, let's let's get started. <clears throat> I hope everyone can hear me well, can see me well, uh, and uh, let's uh, let's start. Right. So, uh, show that the following is true for. Or any positive A and B. So basically, uh, well, we can check. Does it actually work? Check. Uh, let's say A equals 1, B equals 2. So square root 1 plus square root 2. Is it greater than square root 1 plus 2? Well, 1 is 1 plus square root of 2. Is it greater than square root of 3? Well, we know that square root of 2 is approximately 1.41. So 1 plus 1.41 is actually is greater than 1.73, which is square root of 3. So true. OK. <clears throat> that makes sense. Um, it it doesn't make sense for the negative numbers, right? Because you can't take the square root of a negative number. So um, does it work for zero? For, for zero, it doesn't work. If you have zero and zero, oh, it doesn't work. OK. What if you have the same number? I don't know. Two, two and two. A equals two. B equals two. Yes, you are allowed. And we'll talk about what things you are allowed to do. Well, OK, you are s sometimes allowed to square. If you, uh, a equals 2 equals 2, so square root of 2 plus square root of 2, is it greater than square root of 2 plus 2? Well, that's four. Uh, sorry, that's square root of four. So that's two. And here it's 1.41 plus 1.41, which is uh, certainly 2.82 is greater than two. Uh, you can have a more elegant solution here. So from here, if you take square root of two plus square root of two, two square root of two greater than square root of four. 2 square root of 2 is actually square root of 8, which is obviously greater than square root of 4. So that is true. <clears throat> now, uh, so there's a question. Are you allowed to square both sides of an inequality? If both sides, if as long as they are positive, then yes. Can you, you can square, you can square if both sides, sides are positive. That's important. Well, here clearly they are because square root of A is positive. This is positive and this is positive. So you are allowed to square both sides. So let's square both sides. So square root of A plus square root B squared greater than square root A plus B squared. 
And uh, this is obviously a plus b. And this is a plus 2 square root of a times square root of b plus b. Now a cancels, b cancels. And you get 2 square root of a square root of b greater than 0. <clears throat> and here we have if we we can take 2 square root of a b you can divide by 2 square root of a b greater than 0 which is true if a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0 <clears throat> because it's a square root so we've proved hence uh, square root of a plus square root of b indeed is greater than square root of a plus b if a is greater than zero, b is greater than zero. That's it. Now, <clears throat> so are you allowed I'm not sure what you mean by negative square roots. If you if both numbers are negative, then technically you are allowed. Like look, look, if you're not sure, do a simple test. So for example, Take a true statement. 2 is greater than 1. Can you square it? Well, if you square it, you get 4 greater than 1. So you can, you're can't. you allowed to square it. If Both of them are negative, so minus 3 less than minus 2. If you square it, you get 9 and 4, and you have to change the sign. But if one of them is negative and one of them is positive, then it kind of doesn't work. So is four less than nine, but if it's minus two less than one, then it is four greater than one. So you see, if one of them is positive, the other one is negative, then no, do, just do not square, okay? If both of them are negative, for sure you can square them uh, as long as you change the sign. And if they are, if they are uh, positive, both positive, then yeah, feel free. I would say, if it's not positive, I would avoid squaring. The negative square root of four. Okay, we do not deal with a thing. We deal with the square root as a function. So the function fx we say that the square root of x is always greater or equal to zero. We do not consider the negative square root. We consider the function f of x which is equal to the square root of x. And the range of this function is x greater equal zero. And the, sorry, the domain, the domain of this function is x greater equal zero. And range is y is greater or equal to zero. If we want the negative square root, we just will we'll put a negative in front of it and it becomes minus root x. You just put a sign in front of it. Hypothetically, if you just have the square root sign with a, without a negative, then it allows, it's always positive, yes. Unless you have a negative sign before them, exactly. Square root is, in maths, uh, Okay, if you're dealing with complex numbers, yes, square root can be negative. But generally in maths, when we say square root, we mean it, it can only be positive. 
because it open a whole can can of worms if it's not. Okay. Now the things you're allowed to do in an inequality is pretty much the same that you're allowed to do in, in an equation. It's just sometimes you need to change this, flip the sign. Um, so operations allowed, allowed operations. Uh, adding, subtracting, uh, multiplying, dividing, If negative, if you're if you're multiplying or dividing, if multiplying or dividing by a negative, negative, uh, change sign. So if you multiply by negative, slip the sign. Um, well, can you square it? Square uh, only if positive. Positive. What else? Well, also if A is greater than B, and B is greater than C, then A is greater than C. It's not an operation, but it's just a, a just a fact. Kind of, kind of, kind of makes sense. Kind of self-explanatory. Now. Well, Vishaka, uh, the question is, if they're negative, well, in most cases, if there's just neg, if you know that they're negative, yeah, it's easy. You just multiply them by negative one and uh, make them positive. But uh, let's say you have square root of 3x minus 4 plus square root of x plus seven, uh, not a plus, but a minus here, yeah. minus square root of x plus seven, and uh, greater than uh, x squared minus, 3x minus 16. Oh, I don't know. No, here, can you square it? Well, not really. You can't square it because you don't know. Because this thing can be positive or it could be negative. This could, thing could be positive or it could be negative. You usually don't know whether you can square it or not. Uh, both sides, so in, in this example, in this example, both sides, sides can be positive or negative. So squaring it, it, uh, so simply squaring won't work. Won't work. Right. You would probably use a graphical method for this one. Uh, a graphical method. Graphical method is best. And that's what we're going to talk about, the graphical method. Solve graphically. 
x plus 3 greater than 0 0.5x plus 7. Of course, you can solve it. I mean, it's 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 solved. It's an elementary. Um, it's an elementary inequality, so you can just solve it. Yeah, has everyone got the answer? What's the answer? Type it in the chat, please. It's a 0 0.5. No? Do you know how to solve it? Type one for yes or zero for no. Not graphically, just. Uh, no, I'm afraid that's a mistake. Eight, yes. Uh, Rishaka, yes. And Ikshita? Do you know how to solve it? Oh, yeah, you know how to solve it. Good. How says x is greater than 8? Or you can write it as x belongs to the set from 8 to plus infinity. Because it can be from 8 to anything. It's just equivalent, right? So if you draw eight, this is X, this is eight. So it can be eight or anything above eight. Okay. Now, they're asking us to solve it graphically. So draw Y equals X plus three and Y equals 0 0.5 X plus seven. And draw the graphs. So three, one, two, three, x plus three. So that's going to be uh, like this. So this line is y equals x plus 3. And the second line is 0 0.5x plus 7. So 0 0.5x okay, plus 7. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So three, seven. So the line goes like this. And the question is, for what values we need to find where, where is the first graph above the second graph? Yeah, so the question that we are trying to answer, where is or for what values of x or what values of x of x the y equals x plus 3 graph lies above the y equals 0 0.5 x plus 7 graph Y equals zero point five x plus seven. Do you does everyone understand? Type uh, on a scale of zero to ten. Do you understand what that means? 
that one is greater than when one graph is above. Is that making sense to you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it, it, it. I don't know. I don't know how this happened. This minute of madness. Color coded. Draw the X plus three. All right. the y value we don't really care about the y value of the point of their of their intercept because we're interested in the values of x we're interested in the values of x where the blue line lies above the red line and you can see that the right red blue line is above the red line if x is 8 is greater than 8 so blue line line is above red line when x is greater than 8. So the answer is that uh, x is greater than 8, or, or equivalently, you could say x belongs to any number from 8 to plus infinity. Now, of course, you can do it diff in a different fashion. You can solve it. So x plus 3 greater than 0 0.5x plus 7. You can modify it first. You can say, um, 0 0.5x minus 4, right? You can take everything to the left, is greater than 0. And now you draw y equals 0 0.5x minus 4 and y equals 0, two graphs. It's the same inequality, but it's different graphs because you've modified it. And uh, now you can do it like this. And it says y, x, y, y equals minus, minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 4. And 0 0.5x is okay. That's the first line y equals 0 0.5x minus 4. And the second line is y equals 0 which is already drawn, kind of drawn already. This is the y equals zero line. Y equals zero line. So the blue line is above the red line. Blue line above red line when x is greater than eight. So the answer is x belongs to 
the set from eight to plus infinity. Same answer, different graphs. Okay, you happy with that? Is that a 10 from everyone? Do you understand what I'm doing? Give me a number, 10, okay. Cheetah, Cheetah. Rishaka, what's your, what's your feeling? What's your mood? <laughs> okay, good. Uh, lovely. And of course you can do this with more complicated ones, like x squared is greater than x, x squared is greater than x, Plus two, right? So you can draw you can draw uh, the parabola x squared, x squared, and x plus two one two. So that's uh, draw a line, and this is one. And this is two, and they're asking where the parabola is above. Where is the parabola? Parabola above line. Yes, yeah, so, so parabola above this line. Oh, the parabola is above this line when uh, we have. Uh, well, it's here. From here, when x is greater than two. And also when x is less than one. Okay. So it's here and here. Or you can do the same thing, x squared minus x plus two greater than zero. And then this is a different parabola. You can still draw it. We know that it is minus one. Well, the roots of this is minus one and two. And the parabola looks like this. And where is the parabola? But above zero, above the line y equals zero. This is the y equals zero line. And this is y equals x squared minus x plus two, right? So where is it above? Well, it is above when x is less than minus one and when x is above. So x is less than minus one, x is greater than two. Or you would write this answer as x belongs to from minus infinity to minus one union because it's an uh, it's an or union with x to two plus infinity. You've done Venn diagrams, yeah. You know that this is if this is a, this is b, this is a union b, a union b. So a union is is this, is the combination of the two. And here is the same, x greater than two, or x is less than minus one, which is equivalent to this, equivalent. Lovely. Find the whole values of x which satisfy the following uh, inequalities. It might look scary. Uh, it's this figure bracket means and. And or which is the same as this symbol, intersection. Okay, 
So we need the values which are in both in this one and in this one. Right, so we have a set of values from here and set of values from here. We need the intersection of the two sets. Okay. So from here, I can write this. So I'm going to multiply the first one by six. The whole thing I'm going to multiply by six. And the, this here, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by eight. And uh, let's see what I get. I get 3x minus 3. That's the first one. Because I multiply this by 3. Well, I multiply it by 6, but 2 goes away. This goes away, and I multiply this by 2. So it's going to be minus 4x minus 6. I'm going to multiply this by 3. So it's plus 3x. Less than, I'm multiplying by 6, so 12. Minus, so that's by 3 minus 3x minus 15. Now the second one, <clears throat> multiplying by, by 8, so it's going to be 8 uh, minus x minus 5 plus, so I'm going to multiply this by 4, so plus 16, eight, oh, 1, uh, plus 16, minus 4x less than times 8, so 24 minus, so I'm going to multiply this by 2, this is by 8, by 2, so minus 2x minus 2. Okay. This is simultaneous inequalities, right? Simultaneous just like you did simultaneous equations. Uh, so 3 plus 3, that's 6, plus 3, 9, 9 minus 1, that's 5x. And then 12, so 3 minus 6 is 9. 12 plus 9 is 21. 21 minus 5 is 6, so less than 6. Does that make does that make sense? 9 plus 12, 21, 21 minus 15, yeah, 6. Here we have x minus x minus 1 minus 4x <clears throat> minus 4x uh, plus 2, so minus 2x. That doesn't make any sense. No, minus 5x plus 2, minus 3x. Less than. 24 minus 2, so it's 8 plus, six, 8 plus 16, that's 24. 24 minus 5, that's 19. 24 minus 2, 22. 22 minus 19, 3. Is it? Six two. Six, uh, two, two x plus three, five x. Haven't made a mistake anywhere. Okay, if you spot a mistake, let me know. So from here, I'm going to multiply this by negative one. When I do this, the sign ch uh, by sorry, I'm going to divide it. I'm going to divide this by my negative three. And I'm going to divide this by 5. And you can see that here it becomes x and minus 1. Because I'm dividing by a negative, the sign changes to pop plus, to greater, sorry. And here x is less than 6 fifths, 6 fifths. All right. So this has to be true at, at the same time. So x has to be less than 6 fifths, 6 fifths. And at the same time, it has to be greater than minus 1. So it has to be on the, it's the intersection of the two sets. So we say the answer 
x belongs to the set from negative 1 to 6 fifths. Any questions? How well do you understand quest problem three, please? Let me know on a scale of zero to 10 again. Oh, sorry, we haven't answered the question. Find the whole values of X. So the whole values is zero, one, zero and one. So the answer X belongs to the set zero, one. So it's only two values. Okay, so the whole values of x which are less than 6 fifths and greater than minus 1, so it's 0. Okay, so the next, the next 1, 2, 3 questions, 4, are to do with the method of intervals. Method of intervals. A method of intervals is pretty much finding a single function on the left and making it equal to zero. Method of intervals. So uh, I'm going to show it again because I know it's tough. It's it's a tough. It's an easy to use method, but difficult to get your head around in the especially in the beginning. Method of intervals of intervals. Let's do an example. X x plus three x minus 2 divided by x squared plus 6 and x minus 4. And this time we're going to get greater or equal to 0. Um, so first, identify by critical points points. There's points where uh, any any bracket bracket becomes any or well not bracket any multiple any factor factor is zero. So the first, the critical points, points well, uh, zero here because x is zero when x is zero when x is zero. x plus three is zero when x is minus three. x minus two is zero when x is two. x minus four is zero when x is four. What about this one? What can you tell me about this one? When is this thing zero? X squared, when is x squared plus six zero? When x is square root of six, if x is square root of six, 
square root of 6 squared plus 6 is 12. Doesn't work. S minus square root of 6 squared plus 6 is 12 as well. So it can't be 0. It's this is not available. Yeah, there's no critical points here. This is just a positive number, which is there, which is there just to to mess with you. Okay, there's no critical points here. So two, draw a, a number line. To draw, draw a line. A line, label, label critical points. Points. And you can label them like this or like this. So there are two different method, two different ways. So two. I'm gonna draw a number line. So why why would you put a a, a circle like this or a dot like this? Well, a circle when it's a point not included. Not included. And a num and a dot like this when a point included. Included. So we have points zero. Now is zero included? If x is zero, is th is this if, is this uh, inequality true if x is zero? Can you substitute zero into the expression? There's not, not much substitution that you need to do. Is x equals zero a solution? Can you explain, Parichita? Would you be happy to switch on your mic? Say what you think. Well, like substituting x is zero. Yeah. Yeah, if you substitute x is zero, anything multiplied by zero is zero. And div divided by anything would also be zero. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So x is zero is a is part of the solution, because if you substitute zero, it is true. It is greater or equal zero is greater or equal to zero. Zero is equal to zero. So zero is a solid point minus three same story this becomes zero something times zero is zero so minus three is a solid point two is a solid point as well basically anything in the numerator is solid x cannot be four can somebody tell me why x cannot be four Yes, because it's division by zero, it's not possible. So you can see that these three points are included because it's greater or equal, and this is one is not included. Now three, identify, identify where the fraction is positive and negative. And you can see that if we, you can, you're gonna test a number from each interval. Well, a number from an interval. So let's say x is 100. So 100 is somewhere here. I'm going to test x equals 100. And you can see everything is positive. If x is 100, uh, the function is positive because everything is positive. 100 times 103 times 98 times whatever that is times 96. It's positive, so it's going to be positive here. Between two and four, positive, 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 but this one is going to be negative. This uh, bracket is going to be negative. So the overall, the sign is going to be positive, negative, because you have positive, 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 negative, right? In terms of the fraction, positive, positive. Is, is everyone? Uh, understand what I'm talking about, hopefully. Then 
the sign will alternate. And you can draw the graph like this. Oh, sorry, not like this. There's a trick. There's another trick you can use. You don't have to do it th that way, but I really like it. So if it's if it's a if it's a if it's a dot like this, I'm going to use a curved line. Curved. Now here, because it's a it's a it's it's solid point, I'm going to use a square one. Square. 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 And now I need to shade the parts of interest because I need the positive values. I shade the positive values. And four, write down the answer. Down the answer. So four, two and three as well. Balls. X belongs to. So we just write down all the intervals that uh, we need. So from minus infinity to minus infinity to minus three. Square bracket. Not minus infinity is not included, but minus three is included. And from zero to two included. Zero to two included. And from four to plus infinity not including. Yeah, so four not including, plus infinity not including. And that's the answer. So that's the method of intervals. How well, is my same, the same question, how well do you understand what I have just done on a scale of zero to 10? Ooh, nice. Uh, Ichita, can you ask me, can you can you name a specific thing you don't understand or do you feel that doing more examples will, would help you? Well, let's uh, let's do one more simple straightforward example. Example two. So if I have x plus 1, x plus 2, x minus 4, divided by x minus 6, x plus 7. And let's let it be less than or equal 0. So we need the critical points. The critical points is where one of the brackets is 0. So we have minus 1. Minus two, minus two, four, six, and minus seven. We draw them on a number line. So this is x. This is x. And the points, the points that are in the denominator, because in the denominator you are allowed to have zero. Oh, sorry, in the numerator, you're allowed to have zero. In the denominator, you're not allowed to have zero because you can't divide by zero. But if zero is in the numerator, it, the whole thing will equal to zero. So you put a minus seven, minus seven, it's an empty dot, a minus two, and that's a solid point, minus two, because you're allowed to be minus two. You're allowed to be minus one, minus one, you are allowed to be four, four, and you're allowed to, you're not allowed to be six. So six is an empty, em, empty dot. Now you identify where the function is positive and where is negative. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six intervals. Yeah, so these are called intervals. One, two, three, four, five, six. To test an interval, you take any point from that interval. So for example, 
100. 100 is from this interval. You start from the right. If you plug in 100, the whole fraction is going to be positive. If you plug in a number between 4 and 6, well, let's test. Let's test 5. So it's 5, 5 plus 1 is positive. Sorry, 5 plus 1 is positive. 5 plus 2 is positive. 5 minus 4 is positive. 5 minus 6 is negative. 5 plus 7 is positive. So positive, 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 negative, positive will give you negative. That's why this interval is negative. Do you understand this? Do you understand this bit? You plug in a number from the interval, and it turns out that the fraction is becomes negative. All right. Now, if you take a number from minus 1 to 4, for example, 0, this would be positive, positive, negative, negative, positive. So overall, that's going to be positive. Any number between minus 2 and 1. So the numbers will alternate. The signs will alternate because at each critical point, one of the one of the brackets changes flips sign. So the whole fraction flips sign. And you're interested in the negative intervals. We need the negative one. So we draw the we draw the function. We draw if it's an empty dot, it's a round one. If it's a dot, like if it's like this, it's If it's a shaded point, like this. Um, it's it's usually plus minus. I w there there are some exceptions. Oh, sorry. We need the negative ones. We need the we take the negative intervals. Take the negative negative intervals. So we need this, this one, this one, and this one. So the answer, x belongs from minus infinity to minus 7, round bracket, from minus 2 to minus 1, and from 4, to six round bracket. Yeah, of course. Exceptions. Okay. An exception is when you have the same bracket twice. For example, x, x plus 2 to the power 2, x minus 4 to the power 3, x plus 6, x plus 6, x minus 3 to the power uh, To the power, yeah, it's fine, and it, it says greater than zero. Now it's a strictly greater than zero. That means it cannot be equal to zero. So all the points will be will will be empty. Okay, so you identify the critical points. The critical points are zero, minus two, four, minus six, minus six, and three. Okay, so minus six, minus six is an empty point because you can't have my equal to minus six, uh, minus two, zero, three, and four. Yeah, because you can't, because if any of them is zero, it's going to be equal to zero, and you can't, zero is not degree to zero. Set notation. <laughs> I don't like the set notation, honestly. 
Uh, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you mm. on that. You can use either. You don't have to use the set notation. Uh, you will need the set notation in A level uh, for very few questions. Uh, you can learn it then, so don't worry if you don't. Uh, anyways. Well, it's going to be positive here. Because if we test a big number, it's going to be positive. Now here, between 3 and 4. So th 4, x minus 4 is to the power 3. So the sign changes 3 times. Sign changes. Changes 3 times. Because effectively, it's x minus 4 x minus 4 and x minus 4, right? It's three brackets. So if it changes three times, then it changes. Now at three, it changes. At zero, it changes. At minus two, it changes twice. Sign changes twice. Therefore, it doesn't change it because still it remains minus. At six, you have six twice. You have it on the top and on the bottom. And of course you can divide by them, right? But then you wouldn't, you would forget to exclude that point. So I, my advice is not to divide even if it is divisible. And it's it changes twice again. So it's gonna be negative. So you go from positive to negative, positive, negative, Negative, negative. Okay, the answer is going to be more fun if we do it this way. Less than zero. So the answer is x belongs to minus infinity to minus six, from minus six to minus two, from minus 2 to 0, and from 3 to 4. So pick negative, negative, negative intervals. OK, how's your understanding uh, now of the method on a scale of 0 to 10? Oh, sorry, Vishaka, you don't understand this notation. Um, well, it's a set. Remember when you study Venn diagrams, this is a set A, you have set B. So just the same way. So you have set, the set from minus infinity to minus six. It's all numbers from minus infinity to minus six. All the numbers from minus six to minus two. So it's like A union B union C union D. Does that does that help, Vishaka, with the notation? All right. Yes, it, it, it means or. Oh, semicolons. It's just, uh, it's a. Look, in, uh, in many countries, we use, uh, or they use, comma instead of a decimal point. So 3.4 would mean uh, 3.4. So this would be confusing. Not It wouldn't mean from 3 to 4. It would mean 3.4. 
So in those countries, so that's Germany, France, Russia, Ukraine, pretty much all of Europe. <laughs> Pretty much all of Europe, you would have you would use a semicolon instead of a col instead of a comma. Does that make sense? The brackets, the round brackets, are non-inclusive, but the square brackets are inclusive. So this is inclusive. Inclusive, and the round bracket is non-inclusive. Uh, the the uh, the numbers it's a range from minus infinity to minus seven so it's it's the set from minus infinity to minus seven so it's this bit from minus infinity to minus seven not including minus seven and not including infinity of course this is from minus two inclusive to minus one and this is from four to six non non inclusive okay all right, glad, glad to be a foul. All right, <clears throat> now all we need to do is just uh, to learn to use uh, the method. Okay, so problem four. So all we need to do is make it zero. So one over x plus two minus three over x minus three less than zero find the common denominator, so multiply this by x minus 3, multiply this by x plus 2, and it's going to be x plus 2, x minus 3 is the common denominator, and this is going to be x minus 3, minus 3x minus 6, less than 0. x minus 3x and minus 2x minus uh, minus 9, going to be x plus 2, x minus 3, 0. Um, you can factor it if you wish, but uh, you can just find this critical point straight away. So minus 2, 3. And here, the critical point is minus 4.5. Because if you plug in minus 4.5, you won't get zero. Okay, now well, what we need to do is draw a number line. So minus 4.5, not including 4.5, minus 2, 3, uh, and we need to check the sign. So t test a number from this end, and you will see that if you plug in a large positive number, like 100, then it's going to be negative, positive, positive. So overall, it's going to be negative. Between 2 and 3, well, it can take 0. And it's going to be positive because it's going to be negative, positive, negative. So positive. Then it's pos negative, positive. So we're going from the bottom. Up. And we need the negative values, so we shade the negative values. So x belongs to from minus 4.5 to minus 2 union from 3 to plus infinity. So the two sets, it's a union of the two sets. Hmm. Easy? Difficult? What do you think? For this particular question? Or do you understand? Well, it's not because it, if it's zero, this this is strictly less than zero, and zero is not less than zero, so it's not a solid point. 
It's only solid if it was less than or equal to. Yes, for the inter for the method of intervals, you always make it zero on one side and everything else on the other. If you want to use the method of intervals, if you want to use a different method, for example, the graphical method, you don't have to do that. All right. And let's just out of interest, let's. Uh... Well, not, no, let's not do that. Uh, the graph doesn't actually look like this, right? Because if you draw the graph, it's going to be different. Um, but it's the, the signs would be like this. Uh, most of the time, it is useful, yeah way to make it zero because zero is easy to understand this one so it's the same thing so take everything to the left and find the common denominator so it's going to be one over two minus x plus five over two plus x minus one less than zero so multiply this by two plus x multiply this by two minus x and multiply this by 2 plus x and 2 minus x. So it's going to be 2 plus x plus 10 minus 5x minus 4 plus x squared. So I've opened the brackets. I've opened these brackets. Should I? OK, should I? Not hurry. Okay, let me. It's going to be 2 plus x multiplied by 1 plus 5 multiplied by 2 minus x minus 1 multiplied by 2 plus x 2 minus x over 2 minus x 2 plus x less than zero. Okay, so here we have two plus x plus 10 minus five x minus four, then minus two x plus two x is zero, minus x squared, so plus x squared over two minus x, two plus x less than zero. So what do we have here? x squared minus 4x, uh, 12 minus 4 plus 8. Aha. Aha. That's unexpected. 2 minus x, 2 plus x. So what do you do with the top? Ideas, what do you do with the top? Or maybe there's something special about the top. Can you, can you factorize it? Try factorizing it.
By the way, thank you for asking questions because uh, that is important. When you ask questions, um, that tells me where 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 I can help, and uh, yeah, it gives me a lot of information, <laughs> and it gives you a lot of information because obviously, when I answer your questions, uh, hopefully that that also helps. So come on. Can you factor it? Okay, give it a go. Come on, factor it. Give it a go at factorizing it. I'm not sure how you got this. Because if you try to use the quadratic formula, x is minus b plus minus square root of b squared 16 minus 4 ac 32 it's divided by 2. That's kind of a negative square root. So that's not a real number. Yeah, there's no, uh, this doesn't factorize because it doesn't have roots because it's a, so what's the conclusion? Well, is it can't be factorized. So that means it can't be zero. That means that it's never zero. Never zero. It's actually if you if you if you complete the square x squared minus four x plus eight, you can write it down as x squared plus minus four x four x plus four plus four, which is x minus two squared plus four. This is greater or equal to zero, and this is greater than zero, so the whole thing is always, always positive. This thing is always positive. Positive, never zero. All right, so the critical points are two and minus two. That makes so easy. Minus two, two. So here, if you plug in a very positive number like 100, it's going to be positive negative because 2 minus 100, 2 plus. So positive, negative, positive is negative, positive, negative. And we need the negative values. So the answer is x from minus infinity to 2 minus 2 or from 2 to plus infinity. So this thing is always positive. It cannot be factorized. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Okay. Right. Problem six. These are these are all done this in the same way. So I'm gonna put four minus x over x minus five minus one over one minus x less than greater than zero. Zero. So multiply this by one minus x, multiply this by x minus five. So it'll give me 1 minus x, 4 minus x, minus 1 multiplied by x minus 5 over x minus 5, 1 minus x, greater than 0. So open the brackets, 4 minus x minus 4x 
plus x squared minus x plus 5. And this is x minus 5. 1 minus x greater than 0. So x squared minus 6x plus 9. Ooh, interesting. And x minus 5. 1 minus x greater than 0. So if you factorize the top, you will get x minus 3 and x minus 3. So it's going to be x minus 3 squared x minus 5, 1 minus x greater than 0. And if you draw it, so the critical points are 3, 5, and 1. 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5. Now, you can see that here is there's a square. So what does that mean? The sign, well, it's not, it can be 0. The sign changes twice twice so we have we take the negative then three and five positive so at three the sign doesn't change so it be stays positive and then becomes negative so it's going to be like this like this like this and it's greater than zero so it's this interval so the answer x belongs to from 1 to 3 and from 3 to 5 so or from 3 to 5 so x is any number between 1 and 3 and 3 to 5 uh Okay, have these So what would you like? Would you like to do another one another method of interval question? Oh, this is not a typical one. Something something unusual, yeah? Like a modulus, modulus question or a square root question. Modulus. Okay, the modulus. Well to to answer this question, modulus something less than something. How does that work? Well imagine we had modulus x is less than three. What could x be? You could square both sides, actually. That's a valid method. Yeah, square both sides. It's going to be x squared less than 9. x squared minus 9 less than 0. Then factor it. x plus 3, x minus 3 less than 0. And you use the method of intervals. So it's minus 3, 3. So positive, negative, positive. And we need the negative values. So x belongs from minus 3 to 3. Exactly. So it's from minus 3 to 3. So it can also be 0. Any positive less than 3? Any negative? Yeah, Parachita, is that what you is that what you were thinking? Okay, so effectively, if you have x, modulus x is less than 3, that means x is less than 3, and x is greater than minus 3. So 
one modulus inequality becomes two uh, two um, two inequalities, two, two simultaneous inequalities. If you have modulus x is greater than three, then x is greater than three or x is less than minus three. So it's either more positive than three or it's more negative than negative three. And hence the modulus x is three. So in, the, in here we have less than six. So that means that x squared minus five x is less than six and x squared minus five x is greater than minus six. So it's between six and minus six. The same method you can use here, right? So from here, you could say that three x plus one over x minus three is less than three and three x plus one over x minus three is greater than minus three. Okay, so now you solve these simultaneously. x squared minus 5x minus 6 is less than 0. 5x plus 6 is less than 0. So factorize that is 6, that is minus 6x minus 6 and x plus 1 less than zero, and this one is x minus two, x minus three is less than zero. Okay, I've accidentally changed the sign. That is greater than, this is greater. All right, so for this one, you, you can solve them. This is two. So critical points is minus one and six, so it's positive, negative, positive. So less than, z less than zero, it's this. And then two and three. So positive, negative, positive. There's greater than zero, so it has to, it's the, these ones. And now the intersection, the combination of the two so minus one, two, three, six. So we need where they both are shaded. So from minus one to two, this one, and from three to six, where they're both shaded, both shaded. Okay, so you kind of add these. Well, it is the intersection of the two, intersection intersection of the two, so the answer, x is from minus one to two, or from three to six. Now, this one is also done the same way. You, you solve both using the method of intervals. You get something. Then this one. Well, this is a little more tricky because you can't like pinpoint, pinpoint. You can't multiply by x squared minus 5x plus 6 either because, because why? Why can't you just say multiply this by x squared minus 5x plus 6? What's the problem with that? And then just writing x minus 3 greater than 2 multiplied by x squared minus 5x plus 6. What's the problem with that? What's the problem of doing that?
Feel free to shout out. Division could cause plus or minuses. Uh, what do you mean? The if when when you were dividing, you could get like pluses or minuses, and it could get confusing. Pluses or minuses. Well, when you're multiply, you mean when you're multiplying, when you're multiplying by this value, you don't know whether this thing is positive or negative. Because if it's negative, you have to change the sign. But if it's positive, you don't change the sign. You can't do this because you don't know whether this is positive or negative. So you don't know. Don't know whether it is positive or negative. So don't multiply. Right, so we can't do that. What we can do is we can use the definition of the modulus using the definition of modulus. And with the definition of modulus is as follows. Modulus of A is is A if a is greater than zero or it is minus a if a is less than zero therefore we can apply this to x minus three so x minus three is x minus three if x is greater than three Uh, so, Vishaka, no, you can't do that because you can't multiply this by, you can't multiply by this value because it's, um, you don't know whether it's positive or negative. So if it's positive, you change the sign. If it's negative, you don't. Therefore, it's just not, not a valid, not a valid operation. Or it is three might... Well, it is minus x plus 3 uh, if x is less than 3. And then it turns into two, two simultaneous inequalities. It's going to be x minus 3 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 greater or equal to, but x is greater than 3, or it is minus x plus 3 divided by x squared minus 5x plus 6 greater or equal to, if x is less than 3. And solving these simultaneously, will give you two sets of answers. They're not, no, they're not negative. Uh, so you don't do anything. You just replace, 
just replace uh, this with positive and this with negative. All right, so so yeah, hope hope that helps. I'll do more questions next uh, next week. Oh, I might not be able to do more questions next week, but uh, well, I'll let you know anyways. All right, see you all. See you all uh, next uh, or the week after. You're welcome.